Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Frazier and this is EA Sports Game Changers. Today, Vernon Davis is an astounding offensive weapon and an amazing artist. From the end zone to the art world, how painting changed this NFL superstar's life. And they call it Maui Magic. What makes EA Sports Maui Invitational one of the most exciting college basketball tournaments ever? Plus, we're with the Flying Hawaiian back home. Boston Red Sox star Shane Victorino shows us where it all started and lets these locals in on the secret to his success. Then, you won't believe how football has changed these people's lives. We have the real stories. Game Changers is on. Hello and welcome to EA Sports Game Changers. I'm Kevin Frazier. We have a great show for you today and it starts with a real game changer. The 49ers Vernon Davis is always a leader, whether he's catching passes on the football field or talking to troops overseas. But you may be surprised to learn that Davis is also a leader in the art world. Ross Thomas went to the city by the bay to talk to one of the most compelling players in the NFL. The 49ers tight end Vernon Davis has always had big dreams. It's about making it to the NFL. And my dream, I, I, I would have that dream often. Lots of kids hope for the NFL, but Vernon Davis made it happen. He grew up with six siblings in a house in Washington, D.C., raised mostly by his grandparents. Luckily, I had my grandmother around. She was a positive influence on my life. A relentless work ethic paid off for Vernon as well as his younger brother, Vontae Davis, a cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts. We always stayed on the grind, and, uh, but that's what it takes. The harder you work, the more successful you'll become. And Vernon has been a success since day one with the Niners. A former first round draft pick, he's now a perennial pro bowler and a trusted target for quarterback Colin Kaepernick. But beyond football, Vernon Davis had another interest, art. It's what led him to open his very own art gallery in San Jose, California, fittingly called Gallery 85. Walked in the front door and the first thing that caught my eye was this piece right here, this powerful piece of you. What is this painting all about? I just made a play. And normally, when you make a big play, you get extremely excited. I mean, there's, there's excitement, there's energy just flowing right through you. It's like the most amazing thing. You're on this cloud and you're so high and you, you just can't come down. I mean, and, and once you find this kind of energy, oh man, it's trouble. It's trouble for the opposing team. <laughs> it's, 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 oh. The gallery specializes in sports inspired works from up and coming artists. A few by Vernon himself. He said, one of my dreams is to have a gallery space. So when you came to that opening night, what was that like for you? It was amazing. Almost brought tears to my eyes. I didn't know what to say. I just came in and I was speechless. So it was a beautiful thing, you know, the moment I stepped into this gallery. Davis had always been interested in art, but he was afraid to really show it until his college days at the University of Maryland. I enrolled in a class, a uh, summer class. My best friend, he was looking at my art. Patrick, he started looking, he was like, Man, yours better than mine. Good at this stuff. I gave it some thought, and, so, and I actually fell in love with it. And after that, I just ran with it. I just followed my heart. Vernon wants his love of art to be infectious. That's why he started the Vernon Davis Foundation for the Arts. In the past, um, I was always afraid to pursue art. I didn't open up my mind until I got into college. So for me, I want to inspire our youth to do whatever it is that they want to do. You know, it doesn't matter what people think of you, you can always do it. My coach always says, attack each day with the approach unknown to mankind. Have you seen a direct impact of, of your work through the foundation or through the gallery on youth? Yes, um, there, was a, there was a young man, when I first met him, he had his head down, he was kind of shy, he was like, 
like this. I was like, what's wrong? He was like, I don't want you a football player. You're Vernon Davis. I don't want you to know that I paint. I was like, look, it's all right. It's OK. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just here to help you. I'm here to support you. This young man opened up. He, you have to see him now. He's, he, he went from this to this. He's excited about his work. He's amazing. He's come a long way. Life is all about making a difference. It's all about giving back. It's always about helping the next person to inspire them, influence them. And that's what it's about. For more NFL content, go to NFLRush.com. Coming up, can lightning strike the same spot twice? Find out why the biggest coaches and players call this historic gym magical. And Boston Red Sox star Shane Victorino and the incredible journey from an island in the Pacific to the outfield in Fenway Park. Then, what if NFL Films made a movie about you? It can happen, and all you need is a story. Welcome back to the show. I'm Kevin Frazier. Still a lot more show to get to. This next story comes from Maui, a place where every year college basketball's top teams come to rock the house in a gym like no other. Allie LaForce has the story. Duke, UCLA, North Carolina, and Syracuse. Upsets, the buzzer beaters, countless unforgettable moments in college basketball history. But these games didn't happen in March. They happened on Maui. This is the EA Sports Maui Invitational. On a laid back island, it's an intense tournament played in a tiny gym in November. Gonzaga coach Mark Few says everything about this tourney is just basketball as good as it gets. I always describe it as it's basketball in its purest sense. There's not you know, room for 20,000 fans. And you, you just go play, and you don't have much time to prepare for the next team, and you just got to play again. It's truly just kind of take all the stuff away, and it's just basketball. A lot of people call it Maui magic. ESPN college basketball analyst Jay Billis has been coming to Maui to cover this tournament for years, largely because it produces some of the best games you'll see all season. The field that the Maui Invitational has every year is worthy of, of the NCAA tournament, and in some instances worthy of the Final Four. In fact, four times in history, the team that won the championship here at the beginning of the season went on to win a national championship at the end of the season. Only the top programs in college basketball get invited, and unlike most tournaments, there are no easy games. If you win this thing, it says something really positive about your team. This year, I had to come see for myself. What is this Maui magic that rivals March Madness? My search led me here. Jeff Timpone is the man who makes the one-of-a-kind surfboards made famous at this tournament. Each team is presented with a board when they arrive at the player's party. The beachfront party is full of food and friendly competition on the big screen, with the teams battling it out NFL style. But don't let the Hawaiian hospitality make you think this is a mellow vacation because the tiny raucous Lahaina Civic Center has been home to some legendary upsets, including the 1982 game that really started it all when tiny host school Chaminade beat number one ranked Virginia. What is it about Maui that makes it such an unpredictable place to play? It's a high level high school playoff game atmosphere. So it's kind of old school in that regard. There's an intimate feel to it. So for a fan, you can't get a better seat. The worst seat at the Maui Invitational is better than the best seat at a lot of their places. The event contributes about 10 million each year to the local Maui economy and brings in lots of first time visitors from the mainland. It's no wonder Arkansas's head coach Mike Anderson says it's the experience of a lifetime for some players. Some of our guys have never been on a plane that long, and not only that, to see the Pacific Ocean, and, uh, and to, it's a great, great experience for our student athletes. In the end, the winner of the 2013 tournament was Syracuse University. But for the other teams, this trip was more than worth it. Doesn't hurt when you walk outside what you see. That makes it a lot of fun, too. Go, going to a game in shorts when the rest of the country is freezing is a pretty nice deal. 
Coming up, the Flyin' Hawaiian. From Maui to Fenway, find out what Shane Victorino and Babe Ruth have in common. Then, football stories that have changed people's lives. Welcome back. Shane Victorino's Grand Slam in Game 6 of the American League Championship Series instantly vaulted him into Red Sox lore. As the ball disappeared into the cold, dark Boston night, Red Sox fans exploded in celebration. Meanwhile, 6,000 miles away under the bright midday sun, Victorino's fans, friends, and family were also celebrating on the island of Maui. It is one of the most magical spots on Earth, known for the sun, the surf, and the flying Hawaiian. Oh! They call him the flying Hawaiian because literally, he's flying. He's flying over the fence. He's flying to first base. He's flying into second base on his belly. He's flying on a bunt. He, he never stands still. Shane Brickfield will never stand still. The race? What's the race? I leave everything. I play every game like it's my last. You know, I leave it all on the field every single night. Born and raised on the island of Maui, Victorino has won two World Series championships in his 11-year career. First in 2008 with the Philadelphia Phillies, and last season with the Boston Red Sox. In game six of the ALCS, it was Shane's monster grand slam that sent Boston fans into a frenzy, but at the same time, 6,000 miles away, the celebration in Maui was just as electric. That was the most compelling moment in the baseball season, and it was almost like Fenway Park was, was a street in Maui. A two-time All-Star, Victorino has played most of his career on the baseball-crazed East Coast, but deep down, he's still a Maui kid at heart. Few Hawaiian-born players have made it to the big leagues, but Shane is working hard to ensure more big leaguers come out of Maui like he did. This is the Shane Victorino Foundation Baseball Clinic, where Shane comes home to play and teach both baseball and life. Got to hit me right in the chest. If there's one thing I want you guys to remember, study hard. You guys understand what I'm saying? Study hard, do well in school. To be able to come back, stand in front of all these kids, they can look at me and say, okay, this kid grew up here. Same fields, same dreams, and I was able to do it. And that's the kind of stuff that makes me, you know, feel special when I come out here to see these kids. Good play. There's only a handful of Hawaiians who've ever made it big in Major League Baseball. Okay, shotgun, I my own time. Shotgun. And as a child in Hawaii, that is huge to be able to see that, you know what, you can do that. You can actually become one of those. And there's just a handful of Major Leaguers who have done that. But as a kid in Hawaii, he is such a great example of a role model of somebody who can actually come out and make it. Coming up, they're real, inspiring, and funny. Football stories that have changed people's lives. This season, the NFL launched a program called Together We Make Football. They invited fans to send in their stories of how football has touched their lives. The response was amazing, and the story's incredible. Here are some of the best, as captured by the folks at NFL Films. I've been collecting antiques for years. Every time I see a tag sale, I gotta pull over. Every time I get an auction notice, I gotta go. I don't view myself as an antique. I'm old enough to be one, I probably look like one, but I don't view myself as one. My name's Lee Crust, uh, I'm 74 years old, and I'm quarterback of our flag football league. 
I came out there the first week, and I get these looks. Who, where, where's his wheelchair? There, go. But all of a sudden, you start playing some games. Go! You start picking them apart, and you start winning. And you get a little bit of respect coming. And then a little bit more respect. And uh, I hate to brag, but I'm lighting it up, baby. I'm, I'm throwing everything. After college, I knew I could play ball. Played semi-pro out of the Richmond Vikings. All of a sudden, I get a call from the Colts, and they said, we want to give you a tryout. And I had a shot, except they had this guy, Unitas. They, uh, and they said, Lee, we can't use you. Look at him, I mean, you can't throw a better pass than that. I'm so much less cool than my father, you know, which is horrible. But he walks out on the field and all of these guys who should be looking up to him like, oh, here's this old codger. And they're like, what's up, Lee? <laughs> you know, then there's me. I'm like, hey, what's up, Lois? How are <laughs> He has changed every single thought I ever had about what it means to get older. I think a lot of people would look at a 75-year-old man walking out on the field as, oh, well, that's accomplishment enough. And he says, well, no, I'm out there to win. I, I don't care how old I am. You win a tennis match, feels great. You win a golf match, feels great. Winning the football game, best feeling in the world. Boy, did that open up. <laughs> it's dynamite. <laughs> it's dynamite. I love antiques, so I'm gonna continue doing antiques. I love football, so I'm gonna continue doing football. Once I get the knee replaced, and the hip replaced, and my big toe, I'm back next year, man. I'm here. Bring it on, baby. There's nothing that can bother me. And from a 70-something quarterback in Connecticut, we take you to a middle school linebacker in Texas for another amazing football story. Sometimes the Cowboys players go out and make appearances. I found out that DeMarcus Ware was going to be at um, the grocery store. My boys were about four years old at the time. And Tyler looked at DeMarcus Ware and he said, do you think I'd ever be able to play football? And DeMarcus said, you know what? If you put your mind to it, you can do anything that you want. And Tyler looked at me and he says, I want to play football. I'm Tyler Sampson, and I go to Griffin Middle School. I play left outside linebacker and right guard. They think, because I have one hand, they think, oh, that guy's not going to be good. I mean, when I first started playing sports, I thought I wasn't going to be good either. But then once I actually got the hang of it, I got way better. He gets questioned every single year. It's the same thought that goes through their head. How does he gonna play? He's missing his hand. How, you know, how is he gonna be able to do this? Come to my side. He's not out there because, hey, look at the, uh, the guy with one hand playing football. He's trying to win, and he's trying to be good at his position. Our outside linebackers should be head up to the wing back. I'm trying to tell him he needs to be right on the line. He's not afraid to use his voice to say, this is who you're blocking, and this is who I'm blocking, and let's make sure we get this play done right. Shoot, shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Watch the left, watch the left. Roddy, be ready to make a play now. Still, make a play when it's you. We've taught him, when he talks to others, to always be open about it. The first thing you do is say, this is the way I was born. This is Lefty, he's, he's the mean one, and Tiny is the nice one. Whenever Tyler does something that he shouldn't have done, he's like, it's, it was Lefty. Really, there's nothing taboo in the house. I know he's used his prosthetic. There's a, a club against his brother. We've had to get on him about that. He'll be like laughing and chasing me, and he'll be like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. He makes everybody around him comfortable. And he competes hard and tries to win every play and has fun while he's doing it. It's just 
makes me smile that my brother has a downside to life and he turns it into an upside to life. See that pancake block? I think with football, he truly feels like he is just one of the team. He's not different. Tyler has told me before, he says, Mom, I don't want to be known for being good for missing an arm. I just want to be known for being good. For more NFL content, visit NFLRush.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right back here next time. But remember, no matter where you live, whether it's on or off the field, you can be a game changer.